Okay, everybody, quick update on wheat futures. These are the E-mini wheat futures. So you can see up here, forward slash XW, okay? Now, last week, I talked about a breakout. By the way, we're looking at the one-hour chart here, guys, not the daily. It's a one-hour chart, so just be aware of that. Last week, I talked about a breakout, and we got it. This big green line up here and this green line down here are part of that ascending triangle I talked about last week. I'll put a link in the description of this video for, um, you know, I'll just call it whatever wheat video, and you can go check it out. So we did get the breakout, okay, and that's great. And I know a lot of people made some good money on that, and that's that's awesome. But, and I think I said it's going to go to 828, and I still believe it will get there, but, but and that's that may take a while. But between now and then, we need to be smart about how we trade, right? So here's what I think is coming up. I think there's going to be a short side trade coming up here that could be quite significant, okay, on an hourly basis, okay? So we're talking, if you traded 10 contracts, you're talking maybe as much as $1,800, okay? Something in that ballpark. If you're trading five contracts, then, you know, just split it in half, so on and so forth, right? So you can see up here that, that uh, we're well above the 50-hour moving average, right? This blue line is the 50 moving average. In this case, since we're on the hourly chart, this is 50-hour moving average. And you can see, you know, if we go back to like uh, the last two weeks, on the hourly chart, you can see the wheat would come up, it would touch the 50. It bounce up, come down, touch the 50. Come up, kind of ride along 50, and just repeat that process over and over, right? Come up, and then eventually, it broke through right here. It broke through and got below the 50-hour moving average. Okay. So, you know, how do we know when it's going to do the old bouncy, bouncy compared to, you know, something like this, where it gets from here and breaks through all the way through and comes down for a while? How do we know the difference? When's it going to bounce? When's it going to do that? Well, it has a lot to do with a quite a few things, but you'll notice down here at the MACD, if we take a look at at that event right there, again, guys, hourly chart, talking from here. Let me, let me go in reverse because really we probably would get back out of the trade about right there. Talking about that, that distance right there, right? Whatever that is, uh, I'm not going to count it all up, but... 20 hours maybe, 20 trading hours, whatever it is. I don't know, maybe a little more, a little less. But take a look down here. A couple things going on. First of all, you can see the height of the MACD is higher from the zero line, the purple line, than all of these heights, right? See how it's higher? It's got more amplitude. You know, those of you that know frequencies and amplitude, these are smaller amplitudes down to the zero line. This one's higher. Okay, that's really, really important. Let me see if I can stretch it out a little bit so it'll make this a little more obvious. Okay, there we go. Okay. So if we go from these peaks, each of these peaks, my mouse is giving me a hard time here. You know, down to there, down to there, okay. Each time, you know, we can we can measure the amplitude, right? If we really wanted to get right down to the nitty-gritty, we can measure that. It's measurable, right? Now we get to this one. We can clearly see the amplitude or the height of this wave is significantly higher, whereas these are like around 2.5 to 3, because look at the little scale over here. This is 0, this is 4, okay? So these are just above like 2, maybe this one got up to 3. But this one came all the way up to four. Okay, so more amplitude. Okay, so what happened? Higher amplitude, greater pullback. Again, on the hourly chart. Now, there's something else we, we want to really pay attention to here. Going back to these bouncy bouncies off the 50 hour. Okay. This is something that a lot of people just get to have an eye for these things, okay? And the more you trade and the more you analyze things, the, you'll see it and you'll get better and better at trading, okay? So let's take a look at this peak right back here. You'll notice that the, this is the SMI, by the way, or that's short for Stochastic Momentum Index, okay? That's SMI. 
You'll notice that peak's a little bit ahead of the, the slower MACD, right? It oscillates a little bit quicker. But what I want you to get here, starting from, from right here, is we can see that we got price going up, right? Price is going up. Yeah? Price is going up. Price is going up. Okay. We get this little drop come down. This one kind of pierces the 50 and then comes all the way back up to here. We'll take a look from here. Okay, so, so it's important to understand that here, from peak to peak as it's bouncing along, and we're, when we're just drawing a line along the peaks, you can see that pri price along and the SMI is set, saying we've got upward momentum, right? There's, in other words, there's no divergence. They're in agreement. Okay. But now look from here. From here all the way to here. Whoops, went a little too far. Well, maybe that's okay. Even to that one. Just before we get to this. Probably, I don't know if you can see in the video, but there's a dashed line right here. Okay. So what changed was this is a divergence on the hourly chart along that line. Right? And sure, of course, we get this down price that goes along with, with this right here. Okay. And then price starts going up all the way to there. But <laughs> the peaks, that peak and that peak are lower than this one. That's your divergence. So price is going up, but the SMI is diverging down. Okay. Okay. Now you can see on the MACD, it's slower to respond, right? It's, it's, you know, it's, it's going to be slower, right? From this peak to this peak is up. Okay. But the SMI says, Hey man, something's up. What's going on here? Price is going up. MACD is going down. Okay. I'm sorry, not MACD. SMI is going down. Okay. Now that's when you start taking notice, when you see this divergence like this, we're, and it's really important to understand that we are above the 50 hour moving average. We're above the blue line. <laughs> okay. Now we see a little bit of a crossover going on right about there, which is a prelude to, to the SMI crossing over. Okay. So that's a really good indication that there might be some price decline coming up. And what we know is bare, well, I'm not going to say bare minimum, but what we know is there's a good chance that price will come down and touch the 50. In this case, it did and it pierced it. I know this chart's real small, but hang with me because I want to show you something way back over here, okay? Okay. Now. So what do we got going on now? Let me um, let me pull this down a little bit. Let me, let me okay. Let me get the pencil back line. Just hang with me, hang with me, guys and gals on this, okay? Because sometimes I'm analy analyzing things on the fly, okay? So as of Friday, at the close of the market for wheat, and wheat closes much earlier than a lot of products. It closes like at 1:45 in the afternoon, um, Texas time, okay? But as of Friday, we have a divergence going on. Okay, well, it's not su a surprise because price, I shouldn't say divergence, I'm sorry. We, have a, we had a price decline. Okay, we had a price decline. All right, but here's the big deal. The big deal is that the on the hourly chart, the MACD rolled over. Okay, you rolled over right here. Okay, but you'll notice that the SMI is, is going up. The MACD is still pointing down. So what's happening here? Okay, now let's take a look. Let me show you something way over, way over here back in September, okay? Up, a little sideways, and up again. Up, a little sideways, and, and up again. Okay? We get this nice, peaky action above the 50-day moving average. We get the same kind of thing over here. Nice peaky action. 
after the it comes down it goes below the 50 and it travels right in this case this one travels right along just beneath or kind of right along the, the 50 hour moving average okay this one was stronger it didn't quite come down and touch the 50 but it, the action is similar it's just stronger that has to do with the magnitude of of the increase in price action back here it had a greater magnitude than this one so but don't sweat it okay okay so now let's look at the SMI back here that uh, we can see there was a peak SMI the MACD peaked okay we get this big pullback on the SMI okay and what happens to the SMI it rebounds real strong comes up but check it out so we're just a little bit past this dash line. You don't know if you can see it, but we're a little bit past this, this dash line right here. So we got a peak in the SMI, but the MACD is still going down. Okay, check this out over here, guys. Down, SMI is up. What's happening to the MACD? Still going down. Okay. What happens after that? back over here on the left. Well, the, the, the price action eventually, in this case, breaks below the 50 and bombs away for quite a few days, okay? Now th this, like I said before, this the magnitude of this entire move over here is stronger than this magnitude, okay? Because we can tell because it got, it got further away and further above the 50. You know, if we measure from the 50 to the peak, you know, this one's definitely higher, right? That magnitude, or the, I'm sorry, the amplitude, I meant to say amplitude, is higher. But nevertheless, the action's very similar, okay? Now, couple things. So, so right away, there's a lot of similarities here. Now, the other thing we're going to look at, there's a small divergence going on here, okay? And, and the, the subtleties matter, guy. The subtleties matter. They really, they make a difference. It matters. Okay, so what you're going to notice right here is on the Big Daddy, we get this divergence. Okay, but even if you don't have a Big Daddy, but I know there's fast-moving indicators, and you guys need to do your own homework and find them because they, they exist, okay? But even if you don't have it and you can't find one right away, the SMI, okay, shows you a divergence. It's a small one over a period of just a few hours, but there it is. Okay, from peak to peak is down. Look at the pricing. It's kind of flat or even up. Okay. We don't quite have that going on here yet. Okay. But another thing we want to pay attention to is, and this is this one is not as important, but this peak over here to this one's slightly down. Okay. This peak to this one, slightly down. Okay. But the big one, the one we're really looking for, which I think is going to be possibly Sunday night. Okay. Today I'm doing this as Saturday night. Okay. We're looking to see, do we get this right here? Or in the same thing in the SMI, do we get that? Okay. Do we get that little down action, little divergence going on? Okay, while pricing's basically going sideways here or even a little up. Okay. If we get that, if over several hours we get that and it moves down like that, Okay, or even the SMI moves down like that during these conditions. Okay, say almost identical to what we got going on here. Now, if we get that, then and we haven't seen it yet. Okay, it's, it hasn't developed over here yet, right? You haven't seen it here yet, but I think we're going to see it. And if we do, then I think what's going to happen is. This price action, okay, so now that I've, I've talked talked my head off, and everybody's probably getting bored by now, but oh well. If you want to make money at trading, that's the way it is. You, know, you got to listen to people like me talking my head off, right? But what I think is going to happen, bare minimum, is this price, once it starts stops farting around for a few hours, I think it's going to come down and at bare minimum touch the 50. Okay, so let me zoom in a little bit more. Okay, let's see if we can get this to come up. Okay, so as of right now, and, and I'm not saying we should short immediately on Sunday night, because like I said, we're gonna wait for that divergence to occur if it occurs at all. Okay, but let's just just to kind of I just to kind of get a sense for price. Okay, right now on Friday close at seven seven three. 
okay? And the simple moving average, 50 hour moving average is at 763. So that's a, ten, that's a 10 point divergence. And not divergence, 10 point difference. Okay. So at minimum, I think you would see 10 points. And I, and I, I'm, and to be honest with you, I think it's going to, we're probably going to see possibly, um, let me get back over there. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Let me squidgy this up a little bit. There we go. I think we're going to see something like that. It's going to come down. It's going to give us our little indication. It's going to be in the middle of an already descending SMI. I think we're going to see whatever, something up there like that, a little something like that. It's going to come down, touch the 50, break through it, and take off to the bottom. Now, guys, that's like, you know, that's, that's like 9, 6, 9, 7, all the way through, well, we probably would get out like right over here. Maybe. No, probably probably maybe wait to the next next one if you're brave. But anyway, even if you got out in this area, that's all the way to 9, 8, possibly to uh, 9, 9. So we're looking at like... A full day and a half, right? I don't know, 30 hours, whatever it is, 24, 30 hours of the trading, maybe a little longer, something like in that area, okay? This one was huge, guys. It went from 721. I'm going to finish up the video with this. I know the video's getting long. 721, guys, kind of area, all the way down. Well, if we got out here, which would be hard to... It would be hard to continue to trade after after this bottom right here. 721 all the way down to 701. Let me switch over to the spreadsheet and we'll finish up with profits. Okay, so here you go. E mini wheat. This is 10 contracts. Okay. I'm just I don't have it the, the, I don't show everything to the left over there, but that's 10 contracts. Okay, if you don't have as much money, you just split it in half or quarters. Here's the profit on it. From 721 to 701. Short side trade, two thousand dollars, guys. And anywhere from like 16 to 24 or 30 hour period. I'm just throwing it out there ballparking, okay? So that's what I think is potentially coming up for wheat. If we get the confirmation, I think it's a good trade. Okay, if we get confirmation, then I think um, that's that's the trade. So, you know, I don't know if I don't know if if you can truly stomach the whole descent. You know, some people might get out earlier, whatever, okay? But this is just kind of ballparking what I think is possible. Okay. I'll switch back over to the chart. Finish up with that. So there you go, guys. That's what I think possibly could happen. If we get that little divergence Sunday night, something like that going on, I think it's potentially bombs away. I can't say for exactly how long. It may not last as long as this one. It may not be as deep as this one. Okay, we'll definitely be keeping track of the of the um, of the. Uh, let me get back over to yellow a little bit better. It's not cooperating. Yellow, I said. Damn it. <laughs> of the um, of the MACD. Okay, you want to keep track of that. But the one you really got to watch in these kind of scenarios where it's bombs away, or even if it's taken off in the other direction, you really got to watch your SMI. Okay, that's the one you're really going to want to watch. Okay, because that, that like this one where it just stayed down and that a first initial bounce off the bottom, it's going to be really hard to stay in the trade. Even though that, even though the MACD says that we still got a ways to go. Sometimes the MACD will, will, is just late to respond. And if you wait too long, you know, you're giving back a lot of profit. In this case, in this case, it bounced a little bit and, and then really did come down for that final little dip right there. Okay, kind of right in that area. But, you know, that's for the brave souls. I mean, that's for like super ultra aggressive. Me personally, I probably would have got out either here. And if I wanted to like be a little bit like heading into like really aggressive trading or, or, or like, you know, not severely aggressive, but pretty aggressive, then I'd get out on that one right there. Okay. 
So those are the things you're looking for. If this occurs and those that want to make the trade, again, educational video only, make your own trades. Don't blame me for bad trades. Do your own thing. Be responsible. Put on the big boy pants, okay? But that's what I think could potentially happen. Cross below the 50, really nice trade, and then watch your SMI for that pullback to get out, okay? Yeah, it may require you to stay up and get some and, and lose some sleep. But guess what, guys? $1,000 trade, $1,500 trade, for those of you have bigger accounts, maybe you're going to do 15, 20 contracts, smaller accounts, five, whatever, $1,000 trade. Some might be a $500 trade, whatever it is. Yeah, you might lose some sleep to stay into this, get a few hours sleep. Make sure if you're if you're going to bed to get some nappy nap, for crying out loud, make sure you have your stop losses put in there. And you might want to set either just a straight up limit for a close, or you might want to put a trillion stop. If you like, let's say you go to bed. And you're you're down in this area, and you're already four or five hundred bucks up, or whatever, hundred bucks up, two hundred bucks up. Then put your trailing stop in there. Give it some room to breathe, and, and <laughs> happy sleeping, right? Hope you get up in the morning, and you're and it's down in here. All right, guys, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please, if you don't mind, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. Talk to you all real soon again next time. Happy trading, everybody.